Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 17th, Easter Sunday. A very happy Easter to you all. Uh, it's a cold day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Crazy, crazy weather. Uh, was in the 80s a few days ago. A couple days in the 70s and 60s, and today we're in the 40s. A lot of rain, some sunshine. Such is life. But it is Easter, and I, I hope uh, you are all, all are having a, uh, a blessed Sunday today and enjoying all the blessings of the Easter season. Uh, to my Jewish friends, uh, I hope your Passover is full of blessings and uh, that it's off to a good start. And to everyone else, I hope you're having a peaceful Sunday. Oh, a couple things to talk about today. But uh, first, well, important stuff. Uh, Near pipe, lovely little pipe. Uh, haunted bookshop. Good stuff. And of course, some eight o'clock coffee. So I want to, before I get into other things, I wanted to mention that uh, my friend Jack Kurtz, you, you know Jack Kurtz, I've talked about him so often, I did an interview, a uh, little video interview of him uh, on one of my live streams. Wonderful man, uh, really, uh, really love you Jack. Uh, I got notification yesterday that Jack was actually in... Um, not a hospital, but a but a but a rehab center, a uh, step down facility, I guess you would call it. Jack had a bit of a medical issue, where he he had to go in for some testing. They gave him a sedative, and he went home. And next thing he knew, he was in the hospital. Uh, he's been in the hospital for well, a week and a half. Now he's in a. Um, rehab nursing facility where they're they're taking care of him and trying to get him strong enough to to go back home so uh we're all pulling for you jack and uh folks if you if you if you're the praying sort please uh send up a few prayers for for jack's intentions uh and if you're not the praying sort send him some good good thoughts uh he's a wonderful man and i know he's gonna gonna kick this and he's gonna be home back with his enormous collection of Boswell pipes very soon. I talked to him yesterday, um, just briefly, because uh, his dinner arrived, and I didn't want to interrupt his dinner too much, but I'll call him later today. Uh, he said that he, he, he can't wait to get home and smoke a pipe, and he knows exactly which pipe he's going to smoke and exactly what he's going to smoke in it. So <laughs> I feel for you, Jack. I told him I would try to smuggle in some pipes and tobacco, but I think that would get us both kicked out. So we don't want that. So the past few days, um, you know, beginning on Good Friday and uh, actually Thursday evening until this morning, I, I kind of took a break from all things social media, all things, uh, largely all things pipe related. I, I did do a little bit of work down here in the shop yesterday, but I've just been, you know, doing what you're supposed to do in this season. Uh, we've got a uh, nice meal planned later today. My, my wife's been cooking already and uh, yeah, look, just looking forward to enjoying Easter with her. So last time we talked, I was uh, telling you about some issues I was having with the wood lathe and my uh, attempts at pipe carving. And if you recall, I had a pipe that was drilled off center and turned off center and it was it just basically a mess. And I was trying to figure out how that happened. 
and it was confusing and I got a lot of great uh, suggestions in, in the comments to that video. A couple people reached out to me uh, through other means, through email or instant messaging, text messaging, whatever, and offered uh, advice. Um, Glenn uh, Drop Bear Woodworks actually got in touch and I had a chat with him the other night. He's a wonderful guy. Uh, a lot of wood turning experience, so really enjoyed that. Thank you, Glenn. And uh, I learned an awful lot in, in, in these interactions and eventually I figured out what the problem is and I'm gonna, if you're not interested in wood turning or pipe carving, you might want to fast forward a little bit, but if you are interested, I, I thought it would be worthwhile kind of going through what the problem was. So the problem turned out to be the, the not the lathe and not, not the tailstock, which is what I was focused on, but the chuck jaws were the problem. And I'll explain that. I've got some pictures here that I'll switch over to. So this is, this is uh, two pictures here. On the left-hand side, you can see the chuck itself, which is that large uh, object at the bottom. And then sitting on top of it, those two L-shaped pieces, those are the chuck jaws. They bolt down onto it and they slide in and out on, on carriers. And if you look closely, you can see that the chuck jaw on the, the right-hand side is actually at a slight angle. It's raised up a bit in that, that part closest to the center compared to the one on the left. The reason is that the, these... Um, carriers on this chuck have these little locating pins. Uh, they're not really pins, they're curved regions that rise up. And you can actually see that if you look right in the center of the chuck, there's two carriers there in the front and the, and the back that do not have jaws attached to them. This is a four jaw chuck. I've only got two jaws on it for, for pipe turning. And you can see that little uh, C-shaped or curve-shaped uh, part that, that's rising up above the, the carriers. So when I got these jaws, they were flush on the bottom and I had to actually modify them to work with the chuck. Now this isn't hard to do. These are aluminum. You get out a file, you, you, you modify them. I mean, that's, that's part of this whole deal is you, you, you got to make and modify tools. There's no way around it. Chuck's a good quality chuck. I mean, I've done a lot of stuff with it. I've turned things like uh, pepper mills where you've got to have things concentric. It's never been a problem. So it, it wasn't the chuck itself. Turns out that channel on the right hand jaw was just simply not wide enough. Uh, and I've indicated that in the right hand side of this image, you can see one red line that's sort of pointing to that, that locating pin that I was describing previously that's rising up above the chuck. And then you can see the channel uh, with the second red line that I cut into the bottom of the jaw. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, the problem was simply that that channel was about one one hundredth, I'm sorry, one hundred thousandths of an inch too narrow. I widened it out a little bit, got it to fit flush with the jaws, tightened it down well, and got a piece of briar squared up, chucked in and turned it, and here are the results. And this is perfect. I'm very, very, very happy with the way this turned out. <coughs> Excuse me. Despite it being cold, allergies are a problem. So, so very happy with the way this turned out. Um, Unfortunately, this this block uh, has a. You can see there's a large flaw at the back of the bowl. Maybe you can see if you look closely that there's a large flaw there at the back of the bowl. Uh, it's a piece of briar that probably should have been thrown out before I ever even turned it. We'll talk about that in a minute. So everything's working now. It was the chuck jaws, and uh, you know, like I said, these are aluminum jaws. They they're okay, but it would be really nice to have the same thing in steel, modified so that they work with this chuck. So what I've been doing is I've, I've actually taken some time to design those jaws. Uh, design is a pretty highfalutin word because I you know, basically have copied the aluminum jaw design. Uh, but 
included modifications like a channel there on the bottom, uh, which you can see in the lower left hand side uh, for that locating pin. Uh, I've put in a uh, tapped hole for a, sorry, I got to use the word locating pin again, locating pins that come in from the side and actually poke into the briar so you know where center is. Um, you countersunk them, and th things like that, countersunk the holes. So this is, um, this is a plan, it's in CAD, and I'm trying right now to get a uh, machinist to make these jaws for me. There are some online machine shops that do this sort of thing. Unfortunately, uh, while the, the jaws themselves are quite uh, inexpensive when you when you really consider everything it's uh, I think it was like sixty dollars each and of course you need two of them uh, to make them in steel uh, which would be wonderful but there's a two hundred and fifty dollar setup charge for it for the online uh, shop so I'm looking into a couple of other options uh, my buddy uh, Jim has offered uh, Jim, a guy that I met through uh, Facebook, uh, he has a machine shop that he uses for a lot of things. He's offered to take the designs over and ask the guy uh, if he could do something with them. I'm looking into some local options. So hopefully I'll be able to get those jaws made in steel, and that'll be fantastic because the, the, the lathe itself is good. I am going to upgrade the lathe. I've been talking to my friend Eric S. about... Uh, purchasing one of his lathes that he doesn't use anymore. So I'm going to get a larger lathe, but uh, the chuck is fine. So, you know, just getting those jaws to work properly, getting them in a more robust material like steel or, or in steel, not like steel, uh, that would be fantastic. And I think I'd be set at that point and all the problems are solved. So that is very good. Now that piece of briar, like I said, it, it, I, I, I bought, knowingly bought, uh, some poor quality briar because I knew I was going to be wasting a lot of it in uh, this process. But, well, I think most pipe makers would have thrown that piece of briar away rather than even try to do anything with it. When they saw that flaw, they would have thrown the the stumble away because you know, there's nothing you can really do with that and actually the flaw goes all the way through but I'm not a pipe maker I'm a guy who's trying to learn how to carve pipes and I thought well it's, it makes more sense for me to actually finish it out and uh, you know build the skills that, that go into to carving so I did that and I'll show you what I got here this is not finished this is only uh, buffed on the uh, Tripoli, but I made this little guy. And I put a saddle stem on it. Uh, stem is a little short. Uh, that's, I don't want to say intentional, but I, I didn't want to use a, I didn't want to cut a rod of uh, ebonite just to make a stem for a pipe that I know is not going to ever be smoked. Uh, I'll explain why. So I just used the cutoff that I had, so it's a little bit shorter than it should be. But, you know, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. Now the problems are flaws. So I'm not going to be able to show you that flaw inside, but it's, it's right along this back wall, and it's large. And you might be able to see that there's another flaw coming in right there. That connects to the one inside, I'm pretty certain. So this is this is not good. There's a large flaw down here on the bottom as well. That you can hopefully see. I know you can see that one. Um, grain is not terribly good on this. I mean, it's got some okay grain there, but the other side is completely washed out. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to rusticate it because I've never rusticated a pipe. So I figure it'll be good, uh, a good experience, you know, learning experience. And uh, yeah, we'll do that. We'll bowl coat it, we'll smoke it. But uh, yeah, this is technically number one. I'm calling the last one a pipe-like object. 
I've still got some things I'm not happy about. I I still want to try to get better at cutting these in. I think this could be more rounded in profile here. If I can do that, yeah. And it is round here, but this part here just needs to just cut in there a little bit on both sides. I may do that, try to do that before I rusticate it as well. But yeah, that's where we're at. Pipe number one. The plan is to make 10 of these. Not exactly the same, because obviously i got to make longer stems and all that, but it's, you know, I don't know what you'd call that. It's not a billiard, it's not a love it, but it's comfortable. So, that's the update from the cane rod attempts to carve a pipe world. <laughs> But again, I want to thank everybody that, that offered advice and, and reached out after last week's video. It was really helpful. And I learned a ton. You know, I, I just, that's the great thing about this. It's, it's not, I don't care if I ever make a great billiard. I, I just, I'm having so much fun learning, you know, learning things about wood turning. And I've been wood turning for quite a long time, just not very well. <laughs> So learning more about that, learning more about briar, learning more about shaping and all, all these great things, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Proportions. You got to keep learning. You got to keep your mind active. It's very important. Ah, so it's Easter. Probably not going to do a whole heck of a lot after I make this video. Other than enjoy Easter with my wife. Um, and the dogs. They, uh, it was, it was a fairly nice day yesterday. I took them outside and brushed them and they, they got all excited after that and ran around and chased one another and rolled in the grass and got kind of filthy after I brushed them. But <laughs> that's what dogs do. So, Yeah maybe spend some time with them. I, I don't know how bad it is today because it rained a lot last night. So it might be too muddy to, to do much outside. Got a lot of yard work I got to do, but did a little bit yesterday, which was good. Uh, I'm not going to do any yard work today. Even if I wanted to, it's probably too, you know, grass is soft and, and all that. So yeah, that's about it. So I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. If you're celebrating Easter, I hope your Easter celebration is filled with uh, blessings and that you are uh, covered in, in peace with this, of this season. And if you're not celebrating Easter, I hope you have a darn fine Sunday. So with that, friends, I'm going to call this to a close. Thank you, as always, for watching. I'll be, uh, I'll be back with a live stream on Friday. Don't have a thing to show you in a little bumper yet but uh yeah we'll be back uh nothing exciting just uh the usual fun and games so i hope you all enjoy the rest of your sunday have a great week ahead and until we speak again i will look forward to talking to you all again very soon goodbye now <music>